Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have ourselves, well, pretty much the preparation between Unknown Team and our way, aka Wolf Team, that is going to be on its way soon enough. My name is DK Truman, and joining me for the uh, analytical side of this cast will be Kips. And well, you probably have a couple of things to mention about the fact that these both teams are 0 and 3. Yeah, I sure do. I mean, our way Wolf Team has managed to scrape together some games in there, mostly based off of really powerful hero picks. But all over, they haven't exactly looked like the top candidate that they're supposed to be. And then on the other side, we've got Unknown Team, who have gotten a single map win right now versus Interitus, but who have looked pretty dang shaky otherwise. So this should be very much. Please, oh lord, <laughs> be Wolf Team's first win. Yep, I mean, that's of course what they're looking for, of course. Their opponent's unknown team, they're not going to give it away to them scot-free. But uh, Wolf Team, if they even want to, you know, consider staying into Division 2 and not having to do the Open Qualifiers again, probably would be in their best interest to start winning some games. And well, with that star started roster... We definitely expect that to be the case. I mean, three of them were a TI this year. That is like a big no-no. That's a big fall from grace. It's huge. And it's just seemed like dysfunction. Like, I think if this team actually plays a pub, that on player quality alone, they play so much better just in all of these officials, but they, they don't. And something goes wrong in the team connection. Either they don't play together, or once they do, they go too all in. It feels like they're oversteering the ship. Like, oh god, there's an iceberg. We go left now. Instead of turning a little bit, they turn the entire way and and hit another right iceberg. Another. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, there seems to be some mistakes with the lobby. We have no idea what is going on right now. But the lobby has been made, remade for the third time. So uh, hopefully that's not going to be a foreboding problem in the next matches. Otherwise, uh, we already had some technical difficulties. Thanks to uh, Valve being, well, Valve in, in some of their approaches with new patches. Mm -hmm. Well, at least I can see the actual uh, the match ticker again. The DPC match ticker. That one was broken for me a couple of days. I mean, that's just, uh, that's the way we work. This game's still in beta. So it's always going to be a struggle. But yeah, I mean, this matchup, you said it as well. If the side of Wolf Team, if they pretty much just play it like a pug, you'd even still expect them to make it through this match or just in general in this division too. That That's how talented these players are. And that is what's so surprising about the fact that they just, I mean... Connections between the two, uh, the players, they're just not there. Maybe they found a way to make it work. There is going to be a substitution, I think, soon enough in the roster, uh, as, of course, the wonderful Kips has explained to me. So, um, yeah, what's yeah. that substitution again? Yeah, so right now they're playing with Duster, um, who is their stand-in. Originally, this roster was conceived together with Yadomi. And there has been, like, I haven't witnessed this firsthand because, of course, I don't speak Portuguese, right? Um, but I have been told that Yodomi and HFN had a falling out with Yodomi saying that uh, HFN is unmotivated on the, on the arrogant side um, and does not want to, uh, to really take things seriously. And Yodomi is like, well, that, that's unacceptable to me. And so you had a confrontation with the rest of the team, and the rest of the team actually more or less took HFN's side. Well, and I am also not connecting, it seems. Oh my lord, not again. <laughs> All the issues seem to continue. I'll, I'll restart to make sure right now, so that I'm not the one holding things up here, just making sure. I... I have no idea what necessarily are the issues. Uh, maybe we have to remake the entire lobby or something. I mean, this is like taking a lot longer than I thought. 
that it would. But yeah, um, I mean, it seems there must be some issues in the team. Actually, speaking of which, uh, there is already Duster in the roster instead of uh, yeah, yeah. Yodomi. So, um, they still need to play one more match with Yodomi to not get disqualified on using too many stand-ins. Because uh, the, the confrontation happened after our way lost two games, and you need to play three games uh, with your main player before you can bring a stand in in to avoid people just, you know, roster shuffling nilly willy whenever they feel like it. Um, so the, the, the one game with Yudomi still needs to happen. I have been told that Yudomi does want to do it because he doesn't want to just straight up disqualify our way. That would be a bit of a, a douche move. But then again, they, they kicked him, so it's. <laughs> It's a rough situation. So it is going to be another, you know, now a full Portuguese team. Well, a full Brazilian team, if that would be the case. Um, which, I mean, would probably benefit them in that regard. But is it going to be enough? I, it's never great to see a team like they just qualified for the DPC and start to crumble that quickly. It's, of course, still a lifeline to try and stay in the DPC, but... I mean, if you start off 0-3, you're not going to advance on towards the uh, next stage. And it seems this is mm -hmm. just not an issue that's going to get resolved anytime soon here. I don't know. Yeah. The lobby. I, I keep getting kicked. Do you keep getting kicked? I, well, I just keep getting the stuff has not been, you know, it d doesn't connect and then everyone is disconnected and then I go back to the lobby. All right. It, it might be, it might be me or i might be one of the people with troubles because i don't actually load into the game no oh. um well right now we are going to remake the lobby completely so hopefully gaben please we will be able to at least have a game to witness because this is one of the you know unconventional weird <laughs> issues that you can sometimes encounter when trying to uh pass the game and no one knows what happens or how it happens because someone accidentally defeat, deleted a, potato, a file of potato somewhere and then the entire thing crashes. It's entirely possible. Wasn't there... What's, what's the, the joke again? Like, uh, was, it, was it a load-bearing potato? It was something. Like in a game... Or a tomato. Like something, if you delete this from the files, the entire thing doesn't work. Yeah, I think it's uh, from Team Fortress 2 that has something along those lines. Um, where there's like this... It is, it is a low-bearing tomato, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some that weird shenanigans. Lobby back up. All right. I restarted Dota again, just to make sure. I... Did not. Probably should have. You can still go. There's a bunch of players still missing. Okay. Uh, I'll go. Do, do make sure that they don't start without me. That would be fairly annoying. Then I just have to do some radio commentation on whatever you're commentating on and see how that goes. I hope not. Oh my god, all these issues, all these problems constantly coming through. Well, while we're waiting, I can change one very small thing. There we go. I forgot to update something. Now it's updated, and now I can hopefully enjoy the lobby again and be time, and we can get into the game because. Well, this is definitely, uh, I mean, personally, I am a uh, person, I, I used to play a lot of football because, well, I'm Dutch, so the, the, everyone did. And when I ever had to play a game or en do anything pretty much competitive, I got so just massive nerves in my stomach, like the, you know, the jitters. Mm -hmm. And it never stopped until I started playing the game. And I've played a couple of tournaments here and there, nothing ever serious. And I still have that feeling every single time because I just get so nervous. That lasts for a very long time. It would crush me. I don't hope that these players have the same problem. 
most of them are like joining lobbies is such a natural thing to them, especially if you're doing it from a like a safe known location. It's fine. Sometimes I've noticed that they do get it whenever they're in a team house or, you know, when you go up on stage, then suddenly everything is different. And I've I've had one player uh, even get sick to the point of throwing up at some point. So that that sounds it like happens. me. <laughs> <laughs> Nerves, not my forte, but ladies and gentlemen, we're finally here. The game is starting in the drafting phase. The first couple of bands have already been made, so we'll be heading into the draft. Of course, we'll uh, we go over what has been picked and chosen, but I am very happy that we can finally at least see something happening on our screen. Yes. Because that already saves us a lot of trouble. These first couple of bands are pretty much just as straightforward as can be. Yep. We're taking out the Weaver, the pest of the offlane, and the impossible late gamer to fight against because all these gores are getting glimpsed back, or I should say time-lapsed back to their previous state. Mars out as well oh, versus Tavo. I think it's personally one of his best right now. Um, and actually, our way bans the Beastmaster. That was the other hero that I uh, I really favor for him. An unknown immediately in with the Io. This is a pick that they've played before. They had a decent, two decent games with this, an Io Luna and an Io Gyro. Um, but neither of them were particularly impressive. And one of the things that stood out to me seconds. especially was that it didn't feel very natural for them to play Five the Io um, offensively as well. It looked like this Io was mostly attached to their carry player for the farming and didn't show up as much on the actual brawling section, which is an Io needs to be able to do both. Yeah, it's actually uh, interesting to see because Astini, every single time, kept saying that the, the, the team was going to pick an Io. Every single time. He was dead set on the fact that everyone was going to pick Io. I didn't actually get that many South American Io games. To witness but uh, i do see another one that is a big fan favorite of the region that's the invoker chosen and with the grim stroke two very good heroes against an io yep and one of the things that i've been looking at for our way is the games that they have won so far have all been basically on the back of a big individual player performance there was the previous uh series that they played versus uh, gorilla's pride that i casted uh, they had an, uh, a Tavo Timbersaw that had a completely free game. Another series, series previously versus Omega was the 40R Invoker getting absolutely out of control. And versus Io Gyrocopter, yeah, all of your AoE control is going to do a lot of work. And of course, the Spirit Vessel, great versus the Io as well, and that's part of your core buildup. Yeah, of course, it means that you have to go Quas, Wax, and personally more of an Exort fan, but mm. they never go for Exort anymore. There are only a very specific Five amount of seconds. players that still run the Exort. That's going to be out of the question. But, you know, against the yeah. Voker, it is a hero, it, it hero that you can take down in the mid lane if you pick a nice uh, mid lane. Very true. Unknown immediately banning out the Phantom Assassin. This is this is one of our things that I, I still want to... Wanna, I guess flame our way for this, but they picked Gyrocopter into PA in that matchup that got one off the back of the, the Tavo um, Timbersaw. And that's one of the reasons why they need these individual player picks to come through. Because I think that their drafts are a bit wonky sometimes. So I'm hoping that we see them come through um, big time this time around. It is Get those span. picks in. Ember out. And this is interesting, by the way, like, this is an Invoker banning out the Ember, like, you can take off the Flame Guard, dude. But as it turns out, right now, Ember is just so strong that even if you skip the Flame Guard build, if you just go the, uh, the Slight build, you still get enough done that Damn, afterwards seconds. your mobility and the fact that you can dodge most of Invoker spells are still such a huge problem Five for him. Seconds remain. Yeah, most Embers uh, these days tend to dodge the uh, Flame Shield general for just being a bit more active because especially we saw in the first couple of matches south america tends to be a little bit more active on some of the teams and that's what i do love to see though i mean the first game was actually nuts with how much fighting there was in all three lanes 
and kill potential needs to be there. Of course, the IO Gyro lane is, you know, it, it's tough to kill off an IO Gyro. You need some absolutely heavy damage dealing off laner in position four if you want to take them out in the laning stage. So that should be the safest lane, probably for unknown team. Mm -hmm. Ten were called to battle. Not all remain. Ooh. And Ansu just told me that there's a player that has disconnected. I'm uh, I'm hoping our lobby is stable. And Tor. Well, you can get a lot of damage out of this guy and he sustains decently. But I gotta say, with all of the other options that are available right now, like, you could also be running um, a Razor into this lane. You could be running... And I, I guess if you pick it up right now, you can't go Timbersaw just yet. But there's there's several more options, including Doom, that wouldn't be half bad. And I haven't seen Centaur Warrunner win a single match yet in the DPC. But look at that beefy boy, though. I mean, just look Doobie at... beefy. He, he, he's a <laughs> god. And always just... Terribly annoying to lane against if he gets the uh, quick Vanguard, though... I think the biggest problem for him is that the um, armlet heroes right now are just superior. The armlet offlaners. Mm -hmm. Yep. Especially the Helm of Iron Will just immediately switches up the laning dynamic so much. All of that armor takes away so much of the carry's harass usually that the lane becomes instantly sustainable. Much like a, a Ring of Health used to. And it, Right now, Centaur, yeah, you'd, you'd have to build a Vanguard, that's what I've seen, but then your blink is so delayed and you don't really deal as much damage as an armored carrier anyway. Uh, you're pretty much at one point a uh, glorified escape mechanic. But with the puck, that's already like mute moot because you get Dream Coiled and then your entire ulti does nothing. You can run circles around uh, <laughs> the puck at that point, but that's about it. Skywrath Mage, okay. Wolf team going for a an interesting choice. They do have a bit of control. Skywrath is like nice-ish. I mean, it's great against the puck. Don't get me wrong, but it's just mm -hmm. you don't have like the biggest setups. Center stomp into Mystic Flare. That that's Five about seconds. it. I I imagine that eventually the center gets a blink. You also get the uh, the Inkswell stun most likely, and it's. It's a fairly good hero to help take down Io. I gotta say though, with how far behind Io usually stays, this Skyrath mage feels like he's going to be in the firing line. You only have one silence and you have three heroes that you'd like to use it on. It's a, it's a risky game. But I have seen Skyrath mage do pretty well in the SADPC so far. Double nulls, Atos, um, into, <laughs> into a Shadow Blade actually once. That was pretty sick. Um, so, who knows? does force the puck to really get a Yules. That is one mm. big plus because, well, if the puck doesn't get a Yules, he is very easy to kill. Absolutely. And right now as a mid laner, ideally you never Five want to have to build any remain. utility items. You want to build an SNK. Nah, Dagon. <laughs> like a real <laughs> man. Uh, it, yeah, the lead Sanj and Yasha is pretty much, uh, Sanj Kaya, sorry, is, uh, Pretty much the standard, especially on like Void Spirits and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the mid-match of Voker Puck. Puck should normally win that because uh, just like with the Ember, as you mentioned, you can dodge like half the spells if you play it correctly. Five seconds remain. Mm -hmm. so you have enough uh, damage to push the wave into the Invoker's face as well, uh, which is one of the things that as much sustain as Invoker has, he'd like to use that while trading with you and while the creeps are just hitting each other in the middle. He does not like it when he has to last hit under tower with his monthly damage um, and then gets harassed at the same time by you as well. Or, of course, you're taking your side camp, which a puck is definitely going to do. Dying. What if we're going to see a smoke to block that camp as well? Okay, mm, last aggressive. Book, Sand King. A lot of magic damage on Unknown Team. Line Sand King, very tough lane to beat. Grimstroke plus uh, is Ursa. No, Ursa's banned, Juggernaut's banned. What hero do you think they'll pick up to try and uh, survive that lane? Monkey Not the hero I would 1, 2, 3 call. Make the ultimate choice. Mm, no, that wouldn't have been my guess either, but Monkey King is mobile. You can definitely get on top of the Gyrocopter. 
uh, as well as the IO, you have good AoE for to control just the both of them. And with all the armor of your Wukong's command, you're actually quite durable, even in the face of a gyrocopter flacking away. So I, I don't mind it too much. It's also going to do well versus the Sand King. Monkey King loves himself a melee uh, lane. And you can punish him pretty hard on the first couple of levels, which is what you really need to do versus an SK. I mean, yeah, I, I do agree with that. Uh, especially the, the armor. I mean, Monkey King is amazing when it comes to the armor game. I'm just a little bit worried about the fact that Unknown Team have three absolutely ridiculous... I mean, even the Gyrocopter does ridiculous amounts of magic damage. Mm -hmm. That is pretty much Monkey King's worst nightmare because he's got a terrible health pool. He does, and this this man is so reliant on surviving the first couple of spells and clicks of the fight in order to get his own stacks up and then life steal back again. It, it, this is a reason why this hero is so snowbally, right? If you don't get the HP pool in time to survive and heal back up, he is garbage. It's, it's a bit like Bloodseeker, where you know you gotta survive until everybody else is low, and then you can really get to work. It's a bit of the same story here, so. Feast or Famine Hero? Well, it's gonna be uh, an interesting showing. Can they, of course, get it done? Finally, Wolf Team their first game, or will it be Unknown Team to secure their first victory? One of these two teams will be ending this day with a 1-3 and three scoreline, which is still very terrible, but slightly less so than it previously was. Mm. And of course the uh, the pause. I did get told that the reason why we couldn't pause in our game or that I played yesterday, I think, is because you in pubs you can't pause anymore before first blood. Which I I guess there was a way that they could pause for a very long time and then like abandon or some weird stuff. I didn't know about that factor, but uh, you could also just fix that because just thinking about the fact that someone like quickly has to get something done, comes back and already two minutes of the game has expended, that's not great. Yeah, man, like, uh, when the pizza's at the door, you gotta answer the door. I mean, you see it here. Yeah. The game. Somebody they have... got their pizza. Yeah, exactly. They, they have their entire draft. First thing you do, you pause the game. Get your pizza, get your your cola, whatever you need, whatever you want, and uh, get ready. Quick bio break because the of course the drafting was so nerve wracking. You did not know exactly how to handle it. Look at that courier go. Back oh, forth, back he forth. Wants to know. So. One mistake could cost you your life. Luckily enough, an unknown team do have a decent amount of mobility. Io, Puck, Sand King, definitely dodge and weave out of fights. And on the side of Wolf Team, it's pretty much Centaur Stampede. And that's like their, I mean, you do have Tree Dance, but mainly their mobility is going to come down to the Centaur Stampede. Yep, once they're in a fight, they are pretty committed. I mean, the, the Invoker can always try for a sneaky runaway, but... That's very reliant on the enemies not carrying dust. Who will emerge victorious? Oh, feeling, getting caught out, a lot of damage, does stay alive, but... Oh, that was very close to being uh, ticked out of existence. And he's just going to go for the walk back towards base, and then TP towards the bottom lane to help out Arceus. Not to be confused with Arceus, which is the god of all Pokemon. <laughs> Who knows, maybe this guy is the god of all Pokemon. Then get me a Pikachu. Actually, no, I I, I want to... Get me a Ditto. Yep, Ditto, 100%. Let's see about this bot line. Yeah, the IOTPs in this is a little bit of a risk, because if you get killed now, the entire lane is over, so the IO should take a chill pill, but so far, between the... Uh, the rocket and the gyrocopter's willingness to take a couple of hits. He shouldn't beat frontline too much. Ooh, King RD too slow to deny the small camp from spawning. Mistakes have been made. 
And the Skyrath has zero regen on him right now. So everything in that bottom lane is on Take the centaur. Flying in a salve. It's, it's getting more and more usual for players to bring as many stats to the lane as possible. To the detriment of everything else. And then fly the regen out later. And it's going to be just a single salve on the courier for the Skyrath mage right now. I mean, they do have a lot of damage, though, with uh, Skywrath and the Centaur, which is kind of the only way you can kill off an IO Gyro, but just pure burst. Oh, light, flying. That should be first blood. And HFN, of course, the Monkey King, a hero with a ridiculously long attack range, does get first blood secured. And he's getting that pressure done right now, although... It really does have quite a few last hits. Didn't take a second level yet, but I guess that he doesn't want to take the sandstorm into a possible sentry that's already standing. They need to push the lane back first so they can day work safely. Okay, Argus gets taken down bottom lane. In the meantime, top bound the strike missing from HFN. Oh, the moonlight sidestep, and that puts Duster in an awkward position. He's going to get taken down by Greedy. That looked like it was honestly easy pickings for the monkey. But a little bit of a whiff from HFN cost them. Very unfortunate. Yeah, a bit of a miscommunication. They just went on different targets and split up. Oh. As you mentioned, they kind of do need to get rid of that sentry if he's going to go for the sandstorm levels. Apparently, still waiting was a third point. The patience on this man. <laughs> Ever a big fan of the waiting game. Right now they're doing well enough. This Grimstroke also took the stroke of fate first, so they are pushing the lane whenever he's trying to harass with that. That means that the Sand King is usually in fairly safe straights. So not a lot of pressure coming out from his Monkey King lane. That feels great if you're the Sand King. I mean, he is getting decently zoned if the lane is pushed forward, which is, of course, understandable. And HFN's lane is going pretty well. I mean, does have a kill, 20 creep kills, 6 denies, A-OK. -okay. Currently, Greedy is definitely struggling in that scenario towards mid. Yeah, pretty even. Slight advantage for the puck, but that is to be expected because he can dodge, like, most of 40R spells. You can't EMP a puck unless he makes a big whopping mistake. 40R has been trying to keep uh, to his own high ground as much as possible, manipulating the creep wave to make sure that he can throw things at Sol while he can't see him. Um, but unfortunately for him, there is still a ward up on his high ground, so that hasn't actually done anything. Oh, Argeus dropping low, but low is not dead and gonna stay alive. Just barely. Oof. Playing with fire right there. That fire is the Skywrath Mage, who is now going to probably walk all the way back to base TP in and then spam all of his spells again, while in the meantime, I miss the kill on to Greedy Top Lane. T tours for my perfect observation skills. Unfortunate. But, yeah, he, uh, he tried for the, uh, the Sandstorm here, and unfortunately... Duster has been ready with the sentries all this time. To, of course, the detriment of his boots. Position 6 is all so fun, I guess. Yeah. Davo going for the classic... Uh, oh, actually, look to go for the Vanguard instead. Decides to go for uh, some magic armor, which is probably the better of the two choices. Yep. The Vanguard would definitely make you immortal in this lane, but in the rest of the game, it doesn't mean jack. This is all magic all the way you want to hood. Honestly, if pipe wasn't such a huge investment right now, I'd actually advise him to get a pipe. You're finished, Demon Witch. That is definitely fairly un unfortunate, because pipe is such a good support item, but it is ridiculously costly. Another and you don't want to be that greedy? big of a support.
Really, HFN? Really? <laughs> Missing his entire creep wave underneath the tower. Yeah. Oh, Greedy walking back. <laughs> what is this? Greedy. Bro, and HFN just... I mean, okay. Sure, waste more okay. waves. That's that's some wild decision making there. It's really just up to your supporter brawl on that camp, and I, you see Duster throwing out his spells like, all right, I, I guess we're going then, but there he doesn't understand what's happening either. That's very clear. To be fair, HFN two zero one right now, top net worth by five hundred gold, so it's not the end in the world. On the other side, though, Arceus already died twice in that lane with a nice rotation coming out from the 4DR Voker. Who, of course, is, uh, well, he's going for the Hand of Midas, not finishing up the Spirit Vessel immediately, which is kind of surprising. I would have expected him to rush it so that that Io can never heal the Gyro. Yep, same. And we, we see that build fairly fairly often. It's when whenever the team needs damage. And I guess he is content right now that there's enough damage coming from the supporting cast here. Bit of pressure onto this Skyrath Mage, honestly. As top. Yeah, they did use the uh, Dream Coil from the puck. Slowly, very, very slowly took him down. <laughs> like, Dream Coil into right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. And then the spells. I mean, why, why use more mana than you really need to? So Honestly, he's back in time for this wave. I think they actually did that to drain his infused raindrops. Like, the beam coil, the magic damage, then wait a little huh. bit, hit him with another spell, and then he loses more of those <laughs> infused. If that is actually the case, that is five head say. plays right there. <laughs> that would be... Yeah, I'd be really impressed. That's seven seconds. That's a long time to wait. That was a very <laughs> long fight. I mean, how long does Dream Coil last? They... Six seconds. They didn't use Six, a spell yeah. until Dream Coil was over. So I, they definitely waited to waste another yeah. one of them. You might be right here. That's probably the first time I've ever seen that. That's kind of like playing with your food, huh? Yeah, that is... At that point, you probably should have just snapped the coil and tried to kill yourself as soon as possible. <laughs> but who, who sings that? I should I got, gotta kill myself or to take my range up charges. I mean, that's why they get paid the big bucks. Because you gotta True. make those big brain plays. Argus bottom lane in trouble. There's gonna be the TP from the IO trying to heal up Argus. Can they keep him alive? It seems unlikely. Healing won't be able to keep him going and they lose a big death. However, rotations from the rest of the Radiant side coming in. Dream Coil comes out, catch on to King RG and to 40 yard. Voker's in a bit of a pickle. He's going for the right click fight to get rid of Moonlight. In comes the Centaur, Got gets him stop, but misses it in the end. Well, not misses it, but it gets dodged. In the meantime, Sun King dies top lane, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty lengthy fight so early in the game. Very nice. 40R deciding that since he's dead anyway, Bounty. might as well punish this lion for his insolence. And it also means that he gets to leave the fight with one more urn of shadow charge left, which is uh, as an invoker. Yeah, you died, but you got your charges, so it's a good of Duster gets taken down. Argus, however, needs to be careful. HFN is actually in the sandstorm, taking a heap of damage. King RD as well. I mean, level three sand. So yes, it hurts. I, it's seventy damage together, per second. Together, sleep together, sleep together, sleep together. Not a place you can fight anytime soon, especially not on a squishy hero like a Monkey King who is going for the battle fury first. Hmm. That's. I mean, I was thinking Echo Saber. You farm pretty fast, especially if you keep on fighting and snowballing. But this, this is HFN. HFN likes being the be all to end all in his team, and with the Battle Fury, you, yeah, you can you can keep up with his gyrocopter even if your game isn't going perfectly. But Battle Fury, of course, doesn't actually give you any stats. Yep, you can't yep. fight with just that, and you can fight with just Echo Saber. Are you gonna stay that squishy little? Monkey for quite a little bit longer. Even with the BKB, you still kind of die quickly at that point. Mm -hmm. Especially because yeah, the gyrocopter. 
He's gonna build up that axe. Oh. Uh, this burrow popped in the fuse raindrop. Oh, ha, ha, never mind. <laughs> I forgot there's a line in the game. Easy pickings. Yes, stampede once, you know, the monkey's dead, so that you can get the position 5 Grimstroke out of the fight. That, that, that's perfect. I think Tavo thought he was gonna live. I mean, to be fair, I didn't. Forgot there was a line. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect the line to do that much damage. But then again, Monkey King doesn't have that much HP. I'm feeling like a broken record already. I hope we won't remain a broken record, but that's the scary thing. We might. Tavo got the bot tower though, so at the very least, this is a proper tower trade. Um, I've seen Wolf's team in much more dire straits where they didn't actually take down the bottom tower in trade. And they'll have some space for Tavo to farm up here. This also very much secures the triangle where HFN can now retreat to. It's not all that. You know, one of my favorite plays I've seen in latest patches is uh, with that pig pull that the center has, I've seen. A couple of times a tide hunter just like pig pull walk into the fight and then boom ravage all of a sudden. It is a very surprising little sneaky item. It is, it's kind of wild to see that walk in. I really like that. The uh, the invoker adjusted his build by the way. We were both saying it's strange to not see the full finished vessel. 40R thought about it. Agreed. We gotta keep that uh, IO gyro low currently. The gyro who's Died three times so far. It's catching up nicely once that axe is done. Of course, adds in a lot of tankiness plus damage constantly. That's gonna, mm. gonna be a nice little addition, though. And I, I kind of see what's been happening because Argus hasn't actually taken stats. He's got rocket barrage. He's been actually looking to use that mana to hopefully win the lane, but has not done so. And now he's also not building in through the Dragonlance, so he doesn't feel like he has the money to invest. In the two, um, in the two bands of Elven skin, straight for the Aghanim Scepter is a slow build-up, and he's he's missing those stats while he's farming as well. Really reliant on the out to keep his mana up so he can compensate with the rocket barrage. It does not feel great to be Argus right now. And Age of End does have his full battle fury done, farming some ancient stacks at the moment. So if he does not get completely disturbed in farming, should be able to accelerate his farm. Which is, of course, the plus side of the ba Battle Fury. Of course, uh, in China, you had the um, Battle Fury Ags build. Don't really think he's going to go for that one because that <laughs> is super greedy. This is HFN we're talking about here. But no, I don't think so either. Yeah, he's just... Uh, well, he's making very good use of the cleave mechanic. So, Duster and Tavo. Smoke coming in, Tavo walking in, Central Stampede! Gets the stun going, but there's the relocate play! Sunstrike though, Arceus gets bursted down! In comes HFN, Wukong gets dropped, Greedy on the run, Meatball on top of his face, and that's gonna be a big 3 for 1 trade. They only lost Tavo, and they might even get themselves a 4th here with Moonlight on the run! Does he get away? No he does not! But he will find Duster from beyond the grave. A 4 for 2 trade, and they'll definitely take that on the side of Wolf Team. And 40R with a lot of XR levels immediately after the laning stage, really scaling into a major damage dealer here. This is actually, I think that caught Unknown kind of by surprise as well. Sure, there was a Sunstrike coming in, which, which sometimes happens this early, but I don't think they expected the Jarakov to just disappear. A gyro, not the greatest against pure damage. Does have, I mean, of course, a bit more HP. HP pool, but I mean, the, the Ags helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. At least yes. more than a Battle Fury does. But then, on the other um, hand, he, he, he's 1500 gold ahead and he's got a Blade of Alacrity. I'm getting a little bit spooked. Don't you dare go, Ags. No, that's... Has to be a Yasha. Gotta be a Yasha, right? 
So I even, even I'd, I'd have peace with a Diffu. Diffu's nice this game. Oh, nice jump from Tavo. Got him. It's like a neat little catch. I mean, sun strikes do work wonders with the centaur's very lengthy stun duration. Great demonstration of the ink swell on the jump in there as well. They're gonna go in for the Sand King bottom lane, burrow to the side, dust it up. Sunstrike not gonna connect, but should still easily die to HFN who's 4 1 and 4 right now. And yes, indeed, it is the Yasha finished up. He's not gonna go for the ultra Chinese green, though, to be fair, I haven't seen the Chinese teams do that build in forever either, because it didn't really work. It did not. Fun to see while it lasted, though. And this is where I've seen Wolf Team be best. When they can put Tavo all the way up against the enemy's mid-tier 2. Look at him oh. go! The catch. Another one added in to the bank. And they're 6k ahead in a 16-minute game. This is more looking... Yeah, th this looks more like what we kind of expect from Wolf Team. Mm -hmm. which, which has been missing for quite some time. It has been, hasn't it? But this kind of pressure style of play where once Tavo is big enough, he does have the Vanguard on top of the Hood as well. Very hard to bring down right now. It is very hard to have the discipline to not react to him. To not go for this enemy hero that turns up in the middle of your map and says, hey, your, your mid wave doesn't come further than here. Um, and a lot of teams lose so much farm trying to deal with him. And... Give so many kills trying to deal with him as well. Yep, so he has 2.2k HP. On top of magic mm. resistance, physical damage reduction. Six armor. Six and armor. He's, he's gonna yeah. finish the pipe, Tavo. Mwah. Reading the game like a book right now. Actually a support player. Making the team decisions and they're gonna find themselves a reward right now. Oh, Argus, Mystic Flare that on my screen randomly vanished. Okay. Invisible Mystic Flare. Uh, the new the IO had to be nearby. There, the relocate sends the IO back, but should be able to tether. However, that gives information on where there might be more. The IO is still dead. Moonlight won't be jumped just yet. Or will he? HFN, Bond Strike not going to connect. But they're getting aggressive, and HFN's actually going to go for the Manta style to get rid of the, the silence from the puck this game. Yeah, pretty, pretty understandable decision. Good HP on that buildup as well. Should look to their top. Top tower is no more. And that is the last tier one down. So far, so Wolf Team. Where, where were these guys the past three weeks? I mean, not that, of course, that's the point, but there's only one thing that's different right now. What, their opponent? That they're playing with Duster. Yeah, well, they also played with Duster um, the day before yesterday, and that didn't work out for them either. Who did they play against? That was versus Gorilla's Pride. Okay, then uh, never mind. <laughs> then I guess, uh, you know, Davo just wants to win. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's playing very much like he did in the Timbersaw game. Always in front, absolutely impossible to deal with. Attracting all of the attention and still living. But it looks like Team Unknown is slightly better at dodging him, even though they unfortunately lost that top tower and that fight to a dodge there as well. And this is starting to look much like they're going to want to defend on the high ground, which is a shame because they have so much mid-game teamfight but just haven't really been able to leverage the sand king. I think we've seen two epicenters this game. Yeah, there's, it's... They, they never really found a fight where they could set anything up because it's been mainly Tavo jumping in and then they have to respond to try and disengage from the uh, from the fight instead of trying to, you know, catch someone with the dream coil puck and then from the trees you can hit that epi. And so instead we wait for the gyrocopter BKB. Which is very necessary, but maybe at this point he's going to be lacking some damage. 
Tavo built a pipe. Uh, they, they, they're looking to get aggressive. I mean, HFN is in the trees the entire time looking to jump on someone. But they're not really committing to a push. Yeah, he's dead on the bot lane. Arceus, relocate. Actually, Arceus is left alone. Oh! oh! Arceus on the run. Trying to get himself back. It's actually fast enough to disengage. So HFN's on the chase. BKB, TP. And Arceus does get the TP to safety. While the IO should be able to escape as well. Slinks into the trees. How did that happen? They even got a kill. I'm I'm baffled at that situation. Uh, it looks like the IO heard the... Um the stampede go off and immediately retreated and the gyro was still getting a flag shot in so he turned and promptly lost the connection with the io as the io he sh i think he should have relocated out immediately instead of trying to move at first but altogether unfortunate plays at max tether range it's uh the net with advantage at least is now growing that's one plus. It's staying to a decent, steady six, seven k. Yep, and that's valuable because a lot of the network difference that you're looking at here is caught up in, for example, team fight items over on Tavo. And as long as he's not leveraging those, you're pretty cool with the situation how it is. But it doesn't look like Wolf Team wants to uh, to give that break. They are gonna leverage it. Oh, that's a great double bound us into an immediate Mystic Flare. Argus going for the TP out. So the IO will be the one getting caught. A 3 4 0 trade into the Roche Pit. They go to secure that nice quick Aegis. Unless we get to see the puck trying to go for a steal, but I don't think he's going to attempt it. That should be. Uh, well, with that Aegis, you can probably scoot your way towards that team unknown high ground. That's where you can put that Monkey King on the high ground, even though it's not going to feel that great to put him at that much risk. It's a lot of spam out from Unknown that can hit him. With the Aegis, it's going to be fine. And 40 hour just goes to the bottom lane already. It's like, whatever guys, I have a BKB. Didn't need to use it during that previous fight. I can live here if they, uh, if they gank me. On the run and dodges everything and everyone in the process. Didn't lose anything, gained a little bit of gold, pushed the lane out, forced the rotations from unknown bottom lane while your team got the rest of Roche. Yep, that's definitely a win. Very much a win in my book as well. Oh, and his Gyrocopter's eyes in progress has been so slow. The way that Wolf Team has been able to find him time and time again has just been absolutely brutal. Five deaths over on Argus. A single kill yet, it's going for the Silver Edge. Which is nice to be a little bit more dodge and weavy. Plus you got a bit of crit added in. You can break the monkey so he doesn't get the stacks going. Big finger to get rid of uh, King RD. Greedy on the run right now. Does have a bro strike in a second. Can go back in towards the fight because the BKB from the Invoker has ended. Can they kill him off? Argus does pump out a lot of damage. They do manage to get the kills. It's looking very bad for the side of Wolf Team. Tavo is in trouble. Argus on the chase. Tavo just barely staying alive, but no, Argus gets a nice little crit for that last hit. And HFN, he was nowhere near the fight, and he's the one that's wielding that Aegis. Wow. Wolf Team taking a very courageous fight into five people and getting punished for the trouble. That Gyro, I mean, even though his IT progression is not the fastest, he does do still a decent amount of damage, but his entire team is now gone, and Argus... Well, he... stayed for a little bit too long, especially considering the IO was gone. Like, it's... it's you kind of just want to always be partnered up with the IO. Yep, at this point, certainly. And now HFN is angry that his team got killed. That... <laughs> uh... <laughs> 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 da 
Bravo with a little bit of BM towards his own teammate. I mean, as you should there. If you can't make fun of your carry when he does that, then you might as well disband immediately. Nope, they still have that Aegis two and a half minutes. Walk up the high ground. HFN, pretty fat. I mean, 18k, not too bad for Monkey King. And I mean, this Absolutely is game not. where the Battle Fury does not get punished. It has not been. He has the Scotty now. These uh, these HP issues that we were talking about are non-existent at this point. And he's going to get Alactrity as well. Nice little dodge. Jump in. Mystic Flare is in trouble. Burrow on top of him, but that is just going to cost Greedy his life as well. Two quick kills. mid setter rack secured. They can't get Megas because of the tier 2 bottom. But honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they're just considering going for the finish. I think part of the attempt from the Sand King there was trying to share the damage of the, uh, the Sunstrike and the Mystic Flare. But as it turns out, there's a lot of levels on the Wolf team right now. And it's a level 2 Mystic Flare. Th does that work if you use yourself? It doesn't. Did he do that? Yeah, he used himself. He burrowed in, used himself immediately. Bastard. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's like, you know, I'm going to help you, wing wing. <laughs> yeah, no, this it, is... That... I was like, okay, at, at least he's making the correct play. The gyro needs to live here. No. <laughs> nah, he just accidentally burrowed in the middle of the fight. Oops. Quickly, save myself. <laughs> Yikes. Well, last possible attempt for Unknown then. Gang play. To find a good that? catch. Can they find a good Epi? Oh, two man catch. King RD. Gonna get Fing. Again, Moonlight really only likes killing off King RD. Davo, though, trying to stay alive. Doesn't have himself to have his helmet, so he is pretty tanky. And on the run, but eventually does get taken down. Big fat meatball comes from behind. King RD T bought RD? back, TP'd in, loses his life. Now the catch on to HFN. His age is gonna expire in 20 seconds. But Argus, like this. yeah, he's the one that's actually in trouble. Feeling, trying to relocate him out of there, and he does save his gyrocopter. The rest of the team needs to disengage. Moonlight's got the blink. I, I, I okay. <laughs> Turns around, quick hex. Blinks out, stays alive, feeling not so lucky. Well, they didn't get the Aegis, but they did manage to wait it out uh, while the Monkey King was not on their high ground yet. And they get a bunch of kills in return as well. This is one of the best possible outcomes for Unknown. Getting away with murder in several directions as both the Lion as well as the Puck get out. It's uh, been a pretty tough fight, but you know, two buybacks forced out, one dieback added in. Net worth is dwindled a decent amount, not too bad. Definitely a lot better than I would have expected, mainly because Wolf Team liked to stay spread a little bit more. <laughs> HFN actually bought out a Desso as his fourth item. He wants to end this game, and his team's uh, once again making it hard for him, especially that TP in from King RD there was pretty courageous. <laughs> he, has, he just has faith in his team, and they let him down. <laughs> How could they? Or shamed. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Well, they're just waiting for anyone to make a mistake and walk out of the base. Of course, with the bottom tier 2 tower gone, they only need one set of creeps to walk forward. Argus, he knows that there might be something around the corner. Jump in, missed by Tavo. Nice three-man dream call coming out, Burrow as well. Epicenter being wrapped up, but the silence from King Ardy perfectly interrupts that Epi and the Burr. Found the strike to finish him off as well. That was beautiful play from King Ardy. Of course, he's going to be down for the count. But that fight would have been... Disastrous for Wolf Team if he got that Epi off. It would have been. They were all so clumped up. Argus didn't have to use his BKB yet. Gets to keep that one now at least. I do think that, yep. that he should have probably just, you know, after the three-man dream coil came out, get that Epi ready, 
then stun instead of jumping on top of them immediately. They weren't going anywhere anyway. A game of some sort. And now we are dancing in a triangle. It seems like we're waiting on the hex here for the invoker before Wolf Team really want to do anything else. And the BKB of the monkey. Does he is still, even though it's hard, he is still killable. Well, the gyrocopter is finishing up his satanic to get that extra tankiness over on himself. Instead, uh, making sure that, well, he's not building up that full silver edge just yet. Even though he has the blitz knuckles available. Switched out of that. Oh, oh he got found. He locate, gets him away. Io will have to pay though. You will. Nobody's staying near to try and save him this time. It's just too dangerous. Well, little ball of light, you shall be missed. And the hex is complete. Taro? Slipping away. Moonlight, not so lucky. Oh, he does have a buyback available. Oh, that damage. Oh, really? No. Blink. As a burrow, Mystic Flare not gonna do anything. A game of some but Argus sort? BKB. Oh, that's a painful loss of a very crucial item currently. The last Especially set of rats. The, the hex is up. He is so vulnerable now. Radiant's bottom tower is under But surely they're trying to close their way out. Of course, Roshan respawning in 40 seconds is going to be a big plus for Wolf Team. Get that free shard. Plus the Aegis. I was about to say, I'd love to see the shard over on the Grimstroke, but he actually has one already. Too high of a priority here in the man fight. The hard dispel, hugely powerful as well. If you can get it on the monkey, he walks out of the coil. And uh, then the Inkswell pops, that, those kinds of tricks are super neat and super useful for this lineup right now. I mean, you're probably going to give it to the Monkey King because he's a safe laner, but I also love it on the Centaur. At one point you just see a Centaur running around the team fight with 7k HP, like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. He's halfway there. He'd love the other half, I'm sure. Top lane, Argeus. Oh, not again. Again! Getting caught out. Same position. This time cannot be saved. And with the gyro dead for 70, that means you can get yourselves a nice free Roche or finish off the racks. Either or. Tavo is in place. But HFN would like the Roche. But I'm used to calling this camp over on the Radiant side the Camp of Death because Dire carries go there to die. I haven't seen it that often for Radiant carries on the top lane. But, well, just as dangerous. Well, especially if your enemy have full map control for pretty much 80% of the game. Okay, he's getting that shard. Oh, the Voker. Okay, triple meatball. I guess. I mean, it's nice. And I, I actually do really like it. it. It's hard to argue with, isn't it? Yeah. I just want to see it on the centaur. <laughs> That's the only, the only problem. It's always, you know, That's... when as a support player, when the shot, free shard comes off of Roshan... It's always sad to see it go to the cores. <laughs> yep. I was like, and especially as a caster, you're totally allowed to wish for the cool stuff. Ooh. South? Caster immediately fingered though. Still not dead in the process. Soulbind comes out for big Wukong's command ring. And it's not looking too great with the IO. And Puck dead. Viva comes through. Argus pops his BKB. Has the satanic. Tries to heal up, but no! Cannot get enough healing done. Greedy gets an epicenter, but what does it matter? 40 hours running around with 2.5k HP and the Aegis. 
Doesn't match even if you kill him once. That's going to be greedy. Taken down. No buyback available for the off laner. And safe laner. Looking for that piggy, piggy, piggy IO. But why would you go for the chase on the kills if you just can get Megas and finish the game right here? Yep, this one is over. Well, the Jarakopter died as he lived. Not of much use to his team, I'm afraid. That was such a sad game for Argus. My god, it feels like every camp that he wanted to farm was immediately scouted out by Wolfie. I mean, he did not have a very fun game. He, even in the laning stage, died twice. And, well, how many deaths did he have in total? I don't think it's... Nine. Nine deaths on a safe laner. Oof, that is definitely not what you want to see happen in your games. But, you know, every downside has an upside. And that's, we finally saw a little bit of Wolf Team. Being we, Wolf Team. Yeah. But also some some touches of their old selves, right? That one by one TP in on the shrine was a little bit a little bit iffy. Um, the fight where Jarakopter gets to pop his BKB and HFN with the Aegis just doesn't show up. There's definitely still a disconnect going, but this time, especially their all of their goes led by Tavo looked very good, very crisp, very dominant. Uh, enjoyed uh, 40 hours play this game as well. I mean, individually, there's also nothing wrong with how HFN played. It's just that there still seemed to be a bit of a disconnect there. Um, I'm, I'm just hoping to see them iron that out in the coming couple of series. And at the, at the very least, to keep that down in the next match. <laughs> yeah, I, I just saw something funny. And that's that the IO has done a total of 1800 damage. <laughs> That is Whoops. very sad. That's like laning stage damage right there. 1800. Yeah, he's he's just had to hold the gyrocopter's hand because he's been... And this is what I was talking about, right? If the gyrocopter doesn't have a good enough lane, then you need to hold hands with your carry the entire time just to give him farming speed. Instead of you actually also being together with the Sand King, for example. Being a threat on the map, making sure that your SK survives these goes. Um, but instead it was more or less three versus four for most of this game and unknown team simply could not pull that one off. Yep, that is of course only the first one in this best of three. There's still one more, if not two more games to be witnessed, so don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back for the second game to be played after a short break. <laughs> 